Good afternoon, everybody. Kathy Arbor here. It's spring. <laughs> Is everyone else happy? And I can't wait to get into the spring activities, whatever you may do. I love gardening, so I can't wait to get out there. We still have a lot of snow on the ground, but we're supposed to have some really warm weather this week, so hopefully, hopefully I'll get out there once the snow's gone. Uh, so spring, I always think of uh, the um, cherry blossoms, that type of thing. Uh, we don't get cherry blossoms till mm, May, but um, yeah, I can't wait to get my uh, bulbs, that type of thing, coming up. So I thought I would show uh, a very easy way of doing cherry blossoms. And it's going to be more loose, so more of an abstract um, look to it. But we will... Um, put a little bit of detail in some of the flowers and maybe the uh, stem areas. But um, this is a real simple, easy one for everyone to do. Uh, it doesn't matter what level you're at in your creativity. Um, you should be able to do this one. Now, for people that are just uh, starting in the this type of... Uh, watercolor or drawing or whatever it's always best to kind of give yourself a little bit of a map I guess you could say of uh, where you want to put everything because with watercolor you have to paint a little bit quicker than you would say with um, acrylic so I'm going to be doing a um, stem and I'm not going to draw per se the whole stem but I, I want to show where that stem's going to be so I've got that one and then I want um, it'll be fairly thick maybe some other uh, branches going off into um, other areas like that I don't want to put a very heavy uh, mark though if you put a heavy mark it's going to show through watercolor so I want oh let's say I'm just going to put circles for where I want uh, the main apple blossoms to show and I'm going to show that they're overlapped also so um, put some here So more or less along this part of the branch, like that. And then we'll have stems or maybe we'll have little um, buds that haven't come out yet. We could put those in, but we can do that later. Um, so that's all the main big flowers are going to be right about there. We can add some later. It's not a set. Hey, Devin. It's, you don't have to stick to it, but it gives you a kind of a road map. So I'm going to use my um, silver black velvet. This is a number eight. And apple blossoms are a nice pink. So I'm going to be using Quinn Magenta by uh, Windsor Newton. Just put it here on a fair amount. And what I'll do is just add a lot of water to my brush and then just pick up some of my um, magenta as I go. Now, if you have tube paint, this works really well with tube paint. So if you're working from uh, hard palettes put a lot of water on to soften it up because you want a really thick consistency for the pigment load so I want 
straight on pigment to start. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush just so that this comes off my brush a little bit. And I want to dab in the centers where I want the center of the flower to be. So make sure you give, this is a watercolor paper that I ha I'm working on today. Uh, this wouldn't work as well on sketchbook paper. And then you take a clean, wet brush. And what you do is you make your petals with, by touching the center of that and bringing it out and just swirling. And you want really, they don't have to be um, totally even. They can be, because uh, we're going to uh, spruce them up as we go. Some can be a little bit bigger. Some can be a little smaller. And the petals are usually uh, five petals on a cherry blossom. So it, it's not going to look totally like a flower right off the bat. Do you want just that indication? And don't um, worry about white space either. These are very loose. Clean your brush off a lot so you can get a different gradient of pink. And just play with the color. Ah, and then while it's wet, I'm taking a clean brush and I'm going to go along the edge of this cluster and wet the area just so that it kind of spreads out into this area. We want it to do that. It's very soft looking. Okay. Now we're also going to wet around it and we're going to add some blue and maybe some green and I'm going to use um, I think I'm going to use cobalt blue and I want it fairly light and I'm going to mix it wet into wet here and there and remember this will dry lighter so if it looks dark, don't worry about it. I'm going to add some green. I like the uh, Daniel Smith Green Appetite. Or you could use Perline Green would be pretty too. It's a, it's a nice green. It's kind of a grayish green. Let's use that. It doesn't have to be exactly the color that you would see. Um, I'm going to put some in here in between just to represent leaves maybe. And I'm not worrying about shapes. I'm just kind of laying it on. And you could also put in a little bit of um, sienna maybe, raw sienna would be nice here and there. Maybe be bits of the branches and let it mix together a little more green blue you'll get different colors when the green and the blue mix just, just have fun with it Okay, and 
then I'm going to take some more of this while it's still wet. And there'd be a few little, maybe little blossoms that haven't come out yet. So just dab. And while that center part is, um, you could actually just put a little dab in there too, just to give that a little bit more color in the center. Okay. Hey, Shaz. Okay, and then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow. So this is uh, hence a yellow, and I'm going to dip it into the centers. And what it will do is push the pink away. Okay. Now, while that's drying, what you can do, if you want a um, little bit more texture, you could also drip uh, water or spray it, and it will bloom. You'll get cauliflowers, but sometimes I like cauliflowers. I think they're cool. Or you could put salt in it and it'll give you a really nice uh, kind of mm, kind of like Jack Frost on the window. So now you can either let it dry. It is best if you just let it dry. Yeah, you like blooms? Yeah. But due to the uh, timing of things, I'm going to use my heat gun. Now, if you let it dry on its own, you'll get a whole lot more um, blooms and colors developing. And I can see I'm going to have some really nice blooms here. I'll show you in a minute. How many of you like the loose, more abstract color watercolors than um, the more illustrative ones? Or do you like both? Hi, Anne. You're doing loose watercolor. You like it all? Yeah, isn't it pretty? Show you some of the blooms now if you had to let it dry on its own you would have a lot more blooms so they'd be a lot more defined these are good too i love those all right now another thing before i start to um, define some of these 
there's a, I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube. Uh, there's a big rage right now going on or a trend, I guess you could say, of um, reverse coloring books. Have any of you been watching any of those? Or did, have you bought a, a reverse coloring book? And I was uh, watching a few, and I, I thought, guys, we already have our own. How many jelly prints have you got? It's a reverse coloring book right there. Especially if they're ones that they weren't so great. You can play with them. Even your watercolors, or maybe you're experimenting. Here's one that I did, and I was just experimenting with colors and how to do a kind of a whimsical um, scene. Well, there's that's the start of a reverse coloring page. So you can either doodle on it, you can find things inside of it. Like right here, I see a dragon's head, he's flying. Um, that could be a face in the hair. Or you could make trees and turn them around because you'll see other things when you turn them around. You never know what you're going to find. So get your jelly prints or your watercolor paper. And if you don't want to use this, um, Put it through the printer. Make copies of it, and then you can play with it. Make a few copies. Maybe you'll find other things after you've turned it around, but you don't want to wreck the one you've got. Make a few copies. Yeah, shapes of clouds. Yeah, that type of thing. So, yeah. What a great use for your gel prints, because who doesn't have a zillion gel prints? sitting in a box somewhere I do perfect way to use them up I think I'll probably do a, a video on it if you would be interested in that and we'll see what we can um, develop out of my jelly prints Oh my God, I got all these notifications. Um, so after you've dried this and we know where those uh, initial um, flowers are going to be, now we can start uh, adding a little bit, just a touch of detail. Not a lot, but a touch. And I want to um, probably emphasize uh, the petals a little bit. Not, not a lot, but a little bit. So say this one here. Um, it almost looks like uh, there's an edge there and there's another one under here. So we can take either, maybe I better keep my keep the brush I was using yeah wouldn't it be a fun stream you never know what you're gonna find so usually your flowers are gonna be a little bit uh, darker on the center so you can put some dark areas in here maybe this is a great big bloom and then another one, I'll put another one right there. And this is when you can add more too. And define the edge of your flower. So we can add a little bit more around the edge here. You don't have to get too uh, detailed. These are supposed to be fairly abstract. So 
But if you, I like a soft edge on uh, my stuff. And I think a lot of free formed uh, flowers like this have that kind of look. So very pale, pale flowers. And they'd be overlapping and Another one there. And I'm not going to do the whole thing um, in precise type of blossoms. There's going to be a splatter, I think. Just put one more in here. And maybe one in there. Just to show that a bit lighter or darker. You could play with this as much as you want or as little. And there's, um, I'm just making this up. So I just know that the centers are a little bit darker. Okay, so then uh, I want a little bit of a more. Mm, Let's do some more um, little buds type of thing. So we'll make some darker ones here and there. Maybe those are background ones. You could splatter all kinds of stuff. Okay. Could even make a little bit. While we're waiting for that to dry, you can get your raw sienna or um, burnt umber. You could probably use too, depending on uh, how dark you want it. I'm going to add a little bit of this red to that because the stems are usually a little bit on the red side. Brownish red, I guess you could say. And then we can put... Um, well, actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use ink for the stamps, so, but we need to put little stamens in. Um, yeah, it's almost dry. So very finely, I want the centers more defined. So I'm going to put these stamens in with the very tip of my brush. You could use, um, if you don't want to use your brush, you could use a marker. If you have watercolor markers, that would work. Just like that. Okay, and then I've got some Indian ink here. So this is uh, Bombay, uh, Dr. P.H. Martins. And I want this kind of rough. It's, remember, it's a abstract. So I'm going to use the dabber to do this. So I want kind of wiggly lines. Sometimes the lines are so I'm just squeezing here and there.
kind of uh, oriental looking actually. You could take a piece of bamboo and scribble. So let's see, what have I got here? Or mm, something pointy, There's whatever you got. Um, let's see, I think I have, oh, here. want it kind of I'm gonna even move it with my side of my just never know what you're gonna get a lot of um, branches on it. I don't know if you've ever noticed a cherry tree. They have a lot of moss and stuff on them and that type of thing. Very loose. Okay. Now I'm going to draw it. There you go. Okay, so now I want to put some leaves in. So I'm going to take my, they would be small, they wouldn't be that big. Usually um, they're just starting to come out when there's, when the blooms are on. So let's use a little bit of that uh, Green Appetite Genuine. It's a little bit Oh, I just mixed it in that other green, that praline green, I think that was. Just mix those two together a little bit. Nice green. I think I'm going to dull it down. You dull it down by putting a little bit of red in it. It'll make it go on the um, olive side. Okay, so just a few... They don't have to be anything special. Just I use the shape of my brush. I think I need a little bit thicker. So they would be just starting to come out. Now you can change up the uh, color a little bit by adding more green or um, dulling it down even more. You could do that. There'd be a few in there, here and there, peeking through. Like that. 
simple. Is it my end or does Kathy free them? Yeah, uh, it must be um, YouTube because I've seen it too. And let's put a little bit more here and there in some of these. A little bit more dark. Just in the bottom area or the inside of the petal a little bit and some really um, dark buds Just here and there. You can put in as many as you want. Just play, experiment. And then you could even actually let's, um, do a little splatter. So I'm wetting my brush. I want it fairly wet. Splatter a little bit. You're not freezing, Dorothy? Hmm. Okay, and let's give that a dry. Now what I'm going to do is do a little bit of highlighting. So I can either use colored pencil or I can use gouache. What would you like to see me do? Wash, okay. Okay, I'll use the poster color. This is by uh, Shinhan. This is really good. I love it. I bought a few just to try if I can get it open up. Yep. It's fairly thick. A lot of times I just take a palette knife, make sure it's clean. See how thick it is? And I'll just use a little pan pastel lid. Put a little bit on my plate.
I want to do some more gouache paintings too. I haven't done a lot and um, I really like the look of it. When using gouache, I use a different brush though. I don't like to use uh, my good watercolor. Um, let's see, where did I put those? Well, this is just a number Zaka, it's called. Don't see a oh, it's a number five. So my brush is wet. You don't want to put too much water, but you do want enough that it flows off of your brush too. It's kind of you have to kind of find your happy medium. So what I'm going to do is I want some areas on the petals itself to be a little lighter. And usually they're, it's kind of in the um, top part. And we'll just put a few light areas in. And this will also um, help with um, showing the differences between all the petals. I'm not going to get too fussy with it though because I, I don't want it to be um, it's very easy for me to have it look uh, more detailed because I'm a detail type of person I love detail but I want to keep it fairly loose And this squash can be moved, so I'm pretty sure this one does. Hope so. And I'm just going to soften the edges a little bit. Bring it down. So you want your brush should be a little bit on the stiff side. I'm just wiping the gouache off as I go off my brush, the excess. Just basically light, making a little bit of a lighter pink. Now you could do this with a colored pencil. That's the nice thing about uh, watercolor is you can use your colored pencils over top very easily.
I think it's cool. I like using gouache with watercolor. I think, let's see. This one here needs to be defined a little bit, I think. And let's see that. And then this one here, I think. Okay. Some of these might have a little bit of white also. Buds are usually really deep pink. And then um, I'm going to just put a little bit of highlight on here. Make it kind of rough looking. I'm just experimenting. This is on the fly. Like it's very intuitive. So you just look at it. Something you want to do, you do you try it. softens it a little bit more. Maybe there's highlights you want to put on it. Emphasize something. Say there's a bulge on the branch. Little knots and that type of thing. Or maybe, maybe there's um, different kinds of mosses uh, lynchin is it called? It's kind of a grayish color you'll see on trees. Usually apple trees too. I imagine uh, cherries would get it also. But yeah. Uh, I'm looking at a tree just like that. Oh. Of my window. Awesome! Oh, is it in bloom? You're so lucky. I'm gonna this smaller brush. I'm just gonna um, actually, yeah, I guess it will. Just gonna make some of these a little bit thinner. You could take a pen too if you wanted to uh, use a pen. And then I'm gonna put little dots on the ends for the stamens. Just a few lines. Here and there. That one's kind of hidden a little bit.
Yeah. All right. And I think I'm going to brighten that center up a little bit. I'm going to put some of that yellow in here. Just do some dabs in the center here. Very loose rendition of a now you could leave it as is if you want, or you could take out your pens if you want some more sketchiness to it. up to you but very simple let's dry that and we'll take a look I might put some line work on it I'm just going to basically uh, show some um, where the petals cross each other. So gives it a little bit more um, definition to where those petals are all. You don't have to do this. This is this is me um, getting into that <laughs> detailed part, which I, I I don't know, I can't help myself. I really can't. I just love detail. How about you guys? Are you into the detail? I just I I don't know, I just have to do it. It seems like it's not finished to me. Um, that's why this type of art is kind of difficult for me to do, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't know if it's a control thing or um, what. Just a bit, not much. You could go in and well, let's put some lines in it, okay? Those little stamens that come up. You. Like that. All right, so there it is, a very loose rendition. So now we can take the tape off, and all I use for the tape is this here, matte finish, invisible, this is Duck brand. I think I got it at the dollar store, and all you have to do is take your heat gun, heat it up, and then you can peel it off.
And then it's done. So there's the this is cherry blossom. So quick one. This is easy, guys. So I hope you'll try it. There's real no way of going wrong with this one. Very simple. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, too, is I did get a couple brushes. Yeah, I know. I got a problem with brushes. <laughs> but I, I had to try these. I don't know if you guys have them. This is a silver uh, ruby satin, and it's a triangle brush. Have you ever used these? So it is the shape of a triangle. Very fine point. And I got another one that was same triangle, but this one is silver silk 88. And it's a little softer than this one. This one's a little harder, a little stiffer. Be good for acrylics. This one you could use in um, watercolor. But the cool thing about this is get a piece of paper. When you use this brush, okay, I'm going to dip my whole brush in this green here. And then I'm going to dip the very tip in the pink. And this is great for leaves. So I, I just got it, so I still have to play with it in order to figure it all out. But I think it's cool. You can get very fine lines because there's a lot that holds in the belly. And... depending on how you hold it. You can make ribbons. I gotta play with it more, but I thought you guys would be kind of interested in this. Could use it for making fern, depending on how how much you press down and um, which way you lift it will depend on your mark. I thought this was absolutely cool. I just like the fact that you can double dip, so to speak. You just have to, you have to practice like everything else. You have to practice. But it holds a lot of water or paint.
So turning it will give you this wavy look. So on the side, I flip it over, flip it over. I just, I think it makes a fantastic uh, flower or leaf. Let's see, I need more paper. Let's see, let's get some more pink. And I'll put some green on the end. So let's say we want Cool. Let's try maybe making mm, it's a clematis, maybe. Um, have to have the right amount of paint. So it's kind of rocking your have to practice and it's fun <laughs> now you want one I know they weren't bad price either I got mine on um, the brush guys they had a big they they always have them on really good price there so that one for watercolor, you could use it for um, acrylic too. So that's a uh, medium silver silk 88 triangle. And you can also get a small. And of course, I, I did get one. <laughs> there's small and there's medium. They didn't have large. And then the other one was stiffer and that's the medium silver ruby satin triangle and they're both about the same price i think they're five dollars if i remember correctly but yeah check it out so you can make some really cool you just have to practice but i like how you can double dip and get away with it <laughs> so you can make petals you can make uh, leaves cool eh so i want to practice a little more see what else i can do with it She, yeah, yeah, I've done the um, Donna 
dewberry ones with the uh, one stroke, the flats. Yeah, this is a little easier though than using her flat. I find anyways, but if you're used to that, um, you may be able to uh, use this one even better. So yeah, check them out. Brush Guys has them. Devin, that's where I got mine. The Brush Guys in the States. Didn't cost me any import fees, which was good. And they were all on sale. And their shipping is really reasonable, too. And it uh, took about a week to get it in the mail. Uh, I think it's fun. Um, just I would just get a whole pad of paper and um, start playing with it. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I was practicing roses. I found, well, not the best in roses, but this seemed to um, be a little bit easier. you could practice like I gotta practice but you know if you wanted to play one afternoon and just see what it is it's practice like everything else right just have to practice This one would be they hold a lot of paint. Yeah, they do a lot of paint. But see, that's not bad for your first rows with this. You just have to get used to it and the amount of water it holds. I have a silver, I have a silver line. Maybe mine is a dagger brush. Yeah, the daggers are like, uh, I think I have a dagger somewhere. Mm. There's a dagger and there's a sword also. Uh, this is a sword. So it's got a little more of a um, an angle on the, but they are still a flat. Whereas these, they're not flat. They're triangles. See, that's the, I don't know if you can see that. So there's the tip. And, there's, and it goes on an angle, but there's the, um, the triangle. You see that? Hard to show. There's the flat of it. So the heel of it, and it's the triangle. It's flat here on the this part. And then when you turn it, it goes to a point right across. So it's a triangle. Feral, yeah. And, um, there's other brands, too, you can get. Um, but I thought I'd try these. A lot of people rec recommend them, so... Uh, I thought I would try them out. Um, do you have... Let me check. You know, I got... This, one. Hmm. this is a dagger. This is a Princeton Neptune. I got this years ago. Now, this is a real long one. This would be used so you can is this holds a lot more water too 
It's very soft. So this would be great for um, my sister got me this. She thought it was cool. <laughs> so she said, oh, have you ever tried one of these? No. I'm going to get you one. Again, it's practice, right? This is very, very soft. I don't know if I care for it. It's, it's so soft. I'd have to um, figure out. Let's see if I do a leaf. a little harder to control because of the the length of this i'm not sure it could be it's it, it would go on forever as far as um it's a very line work like look at that you can get very uh, thin lines with it and because you have got so much um body to it it's going to go on forever and ever. So you could use it for this type of thing. Be great for leaves, or not leaves, um, like a bird's nest, that type of thing you were making. Because it would give you thick and thin lines. Ribbons. Um, tree limbs. A lot of times people uh, would rather have a brush like this when they're doing their trees because it gives you uh, not a straight line. It It's harder to control, which gives it a more natural look in your trees. Especially if you stop, go, stop, go. That's the way you're um, typically supposed to do Tree limbs is stopping and going. Let's put some green in here. But yeah, it's cool. And it, going the opposite direction, you'll get a thicker line because you're pushing the bristles together. It depends on uh, what you want, small or large. But holds a lot of water. Mine says Jackson's. Okay. Yep, Jackson's got some really good brushes. A little different. Um, have to play with them, right? So just get out your journal and play. It doesn't have to be watercolor either if you, if you just want to practice. All right, so that's it for today. So we did this. I hope you'll try it. See what you can make. Just make it up. Or if you want, you can look on the internet at apple blossoms or cherry blossoms to see what the wood looks like. Or if you're, this is just made up. So I will let you guys go and you have a fantastic week and we'll see you Thursday. All right. Bye for now. <laughs>